Hello, everyone. I'm Marie Royce, Assistant Secretary of State for Educational and Cultural Affairs at the U.S. Department of State in Washington, D.C. I'm sorry that we weren't able to be together in Edinburgh, but I'm delighted to join you virtually. Even in the midst of a pandemic, culture is bringing us together. This summit's focus on culture and its intersection with education, social cohesion, and vibrant communities is vital. Culture connects us in unique and enduring ways. It connects us to our families, friends, and neighbors. It helps us remember who we are and where we come from. As COVID-19 swept across the world, it was heartening to see how museums, orchestras, and schools maintained our human connection with online exhibitions and classes. This reflects the theme of the Edinburgh International Culture Summit, the power of culture. Our important work continues around the world. In Thailand, the U.S. Ambassador's Fund for Cultural Preservation supports a major project at a centuries-old Buddhist complex. Following local health and safety guidelines, our partners wear masks and practice social distancing as they continue conservation of the historic site. Nearby in Burma, I saw young people reconnecting with their heritage. In Mandalay, the old royal capital, our American and Burmese partners are preserving a monastery, the only royal building to survive the city's bombing in World War II. Training the next generation of Burmese cultural leaders is already producing results. Four young women who started out as interns are now full-time staff. In Liberia, I saw the important role that museums play in recording and preserving a country's identity and history. Museums protect precious works of art and culture, as well as everyday objects that tell our stories. Of course, museums also attract tourists and promote economic development important priorities for the local and international community. We must work together to strengthen these connections and to guard against dangerous threats to cultural heritage. There is personal and communal loss. When archeological sites are looted, sacred items are trafficked or paintings are vandalized. This leaves a void in communities. International cooperation is essential. The United States works with partner countries to combat looting and trafficking of antiquities. With cultural property agreements, we help countries protect their cultural heritage, increase exchange, and build awareness around the world. I've been honored to personally sign several of these agreements. While in Jordan, I celebrated our long-standing cooperation in cultural preservation, which goes back more than 50 years. Whether it's an ambassador's fund project at Petra or academic event, we are unwavering in our respect for culture. Bringing together U.S. government agencies and international partners, our Cultural Antiquities Task Force builds law enforcement cooperation and international capacity to stop trafficking. The impact is real. It saves cultural heritage. It fights organized crime and terrorist financing. And it strengthens our communities as sites for tourism. Through combined efforts, thousands of paintings, manuscripts and antiquities, and other works of art have been repatriated by the United States to countries around the world. We also train U.S. and international law enforcement on anti-trafficking efforts. Their education includes how to recognize, investigate, and properly handle artifacts. For example, our training and enforcement collaboration with the Italian Cabinieri has deterred would-be traffickers and resulted in the repatriation of priceless objects. That's everything from a Roman statue of Venus to a 16th century painting of Lita and the Swan by Lelio Orsini. We also support local governments and preservationists worldwide. 
In Libya, we are working with the Boy Scouts and Girl Guides to bring museums in a suitcase to youth who are unable to access their museums and cultural sites. This promotes social cohesion and counters violent extremism. Preserving and protecting culture creates vibrant communities and it sustains the livelihoods of countless individuals. In the United States, our industries contribute more than $760 billion to our national economy. Cultural preservation and protection support more than 700,000 U.S. jobs and generate $12 billion in taxes. Many of us take for granted the benefits that culture brings to protecting the legacy of humankind. As President Trump said in Warsaw in July 2017, we must work together to confront forces that threaten over time to undermine these values and to erase the bonds of culture, faith, and tradition that make us who we are. My team is busy preparing for the 250th anniversary of American independence. We appreciate the global efforts back in 1976 to celebrate American culture. Please join us again in 2026 to celebrate America 250 around the themes of educate, engage, and unite. In closing, I wish you the best in this important Edinburgh International Culture Summit. Only by working together do we have the power to protect and uplift culture wherever we may live.